Hello, hello, hello. Today we are doing another episode of painting on random stuff. In this episode, I've already picked out the thing that I wanted to randomly paint on. And it's this wooden arrow thing that you hang on a wall, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you definitely hang it on a wall. It's not that confusing. It's just a piece of decor. And I decided it would be best if I painted on it. On the back side, we have my reoccurring terror stickers. They constantly put stickers on everything and then I have to peel it off and then there's a sticky residue. But honestly, for this one, it peeled off in only three fell swoops and there was no residue. Amazing. First things first, I'm taking out this paint palette in a very chaotic manner. Just gonna put that down and take out my white paint. I did buy gesso. I did, I did get gesso, but uh, I have a secret. I actually filmed this video before I bought my gesso and now things are out of order, everything is ruined and we have to use the white paint on the wood. Ah! It's fine, everything's fine. I did put several coats of white paint on this, three to be exact, because the wood did soak up a lot of it. After I had finished drying the front side of this with my heat gun, I flipped it over and decided that the string attachment needs to go. I don't particularly like the way that this arrow is supposed to be hung. I'm not into the weird yarn hay thing we have going on. So I did decide to go through the strenuous battle of removing it. I had to use my scissor, these pliers, are these pliers? I don't even know. Truthfully, I took this from my husband's toolbox. I said, this will probably work and I don't know the name of it. Okay, I Googled it and it is a plier, so I was right. Removing these little staples was probably the hardest part of this, but also the most satisfying. It just made you feel like you were pulling a really long ingrown hair out of something, which is always extremely satisfying. Am I right, guys? Guys? Hello? Pulling these out, of course, did leave some holes and a little bit of a dent, so I took out my sandpaper and sanded it down until it was kind of smooth. I also made sure I sanded the edges of the arrow because this is cheap wood and it had some splinters coming off of it. Aggressively dipped into some more white paint. What is happening? And then I was ready to finally put my three coats of white paint on the backside of the arrow. As I'm painting this, you can see that there is a tiny indentation where the staples were pulled out, but it's not too bad and it'll be on the back anyway. Everything's white and we're ready for our colors. This is the color scheme I have decided to go for for this arrow. The first color I'm starting off with is this very light, pale, baby blue color. Or maybe it's a sky blue, a powder blue. I feel like powder blue is the best name for this. Why do I struggle with naming colors all the time? Regardless, it took two coats of paint for the powder blue to be totally solid. Looks like we got some nice coverage there. I'm taking out my pencil so I can sketch out a design. I decided to go with a flower theme. To be more specific, I'm drawing lilies all over this arrow and I'm really trying to space them out so they look like spaced well, I don't know. But yeah, I guess I do like the spacing. The next color I'm dipping into is this light pink color. So I guess I'm creating light pink lilies. My drawings have several different pieces for the flowers that are vaguely detailed. I mean, I don't have a lot of details on these drawings, but they're like decently detailed. And then I kind of just painted over all of it with the light pink which honestly seems pretty useless and like a waste of time. But I don't think the detailed sketch was actually useless because then I at least had a picture in my head of what I was going to paint after I had finished painting all of my paint. Although it doesn't look like it would help because you can't see anything, it was sort of helpful. After I had finished putting the initial coat of light pink down, I did have to go back and do a second coat because the pink was somewhat transparent. Once that's done, we're ready to move on to our next color, which is this light green color. This light green is really fun. It's like a pastel green, but it also has a punch to it. It's very crisp, almost like a, a crisp apple. Although green apples have a little more yellow in it than this, but it still reminds me of a crisp green apple. 
interesting. Here is the yellow. So I'm using this yellow for the center part of the lily. I thought this was not a realistic lily, but then I googled pink and yellow lily and I found that this actually does exist, so ha. But I did then make it unrealistic because I used a darker blue color for the pollen stick, I guess you would call it. Uh, so this is not really a realistic flower, but I think we already knew that. It looks like a cartoon. With my white Posca paint pen, I am outlining each of the flowers with a squiggly sort of white line. I didn't really need to outline this in white, but I kind of just felt like outlining it in white. I don't know, I just, sometimes you just get the feeling and you're like, yes, this could use a nice outline. I also added a bunch of little white, well, I meant them to be flowers, but now that I'm looking at them, they look like stars. And I added way too many of them, so I went back and covered some of them up with my blue. Oops. Once I had that done, I also signed my B Bella signature. To seal everything in, I took it outside and took out my glossy Mod Podge, sprayed that on, and now I have an addition. I bought three hooks and I also bought some very small screws. These are probably the tiniest screws ever and they go with the hooks. The idea here is to enhance the arrow. I felt like the arrow was kind of pointless. I was looking at it and I was like, this is just an arrow. I guess it's a piece of decor and I guess most decor just really doesn't do anything. It just hangs, but I felt like we needed to have some utility to our arrow. The arrow must have a purpose or I will reject it. So I decided to add these three hooks and the only problem here is that you can still see the screws. They are a silver color, that will not do. I need to cover this up. I took out my white paint bottle, opened that up and honestly didn't even put it on a paint palette, just used my dotting tool and covered each of the tiny screw holes. This was an essential step for me and my brain because when I looked at it, I was like, I don't wanna see these screws. We need to cover them up. That looks much better. So here we have the final result of what my painting looked like with the hooks. I love the colors, but I also love the utility, the purpose. You might be thinking, Marissa, what could this possibly be used for? Here, we have a keychain. This is my Seaford keychain. It's actually something that I put my car keys on. And we can use this arrow to funly display our keychains. How fun. You could also hang something like ponytails or bracelets in your bedroom if you want to organize necklaces and bracelets. That could be fun. You could also hang something like your purses. I don't know. I'm just coming up with random ideas of things that could be hung on these hooks. I am going to hang this in my new art room and decide on what will actually be hung on the hooks. I still have to figure that out. I had so much fun painting on random stuff again. If you want to see me paint on other stuff, I have a playlist linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.